This week's episode is sponsored by Patreon supporter Greg Sapalak, who requested a look at another 1980s toy line with some surprising connections to the Transformers. These are the basics on the Beast Formers, also known as the Battle Beasts. Battle Beasts was a toy line co-developed by the two companies who had previously partnered to create Transformers, Hasbro in America and Takara in Japan. It was a line of small, two-inch tall action figures of anthropomorphic armoured animal warriors, each of whom wore on their chest one of Hasbro's patented rub signs, heat-activated colour-changing stickers that would reveal a hidden image when warmed up. These stickers were originally developed for the Transformers toy line, in which they were used to hide Autobot and Decepticon insignia. But in Battle Beasts, each figure's sticker hid one of three randomly applied emblems representing wood, fire, or water, which were used to play a rock-paper-scissors-style battle game for which the series was named. Battle Beast Wood! Fire! Fire burn! Wood! Battle Beast Fire! Water! Water put out fire! Battle Beast Water! Wood! Wood beats water! Battle Beast! Launched in Hasbro markets in late 1986 and running through 1987, the first year of Battle Beasts was made up of 76 figures sold in three series of random multi-packs. The second series introduced a rare fourth emblem, the unbeatable Sunburst, which defeated all the other emblems in the battle game. The figures were supplemented by a range of vehicles they could ride in, including motorized chariots, and mobile fortresses that opened into playsets. Now, the toy line didn't have much of a story. There was no character information to accompany the toys, and they weren't even divided into good or evil factions. But at the end of 1987, Blackthorn Publishing launched a Battle Beasts comic book that fleshed out the world. In the comic, the Battle Beasts were granted the powers of wood, fire and water by the sentient soul spirit of their planet, and lived in harmony with their world, until a group of evil beasts attempted to steal the powers for themselves, disrupting the elemental balance and plunging the planet into chaos. The series followed a team of heroic beasts on a quest to locate a fabled warrior with the power of Sunburst, who could restore peace to the planet. But that day never came, as the comic was cancelled after only four issues. Takara took a very different approach to the line when they launched it in Japan in 1987. It was marketed as a direct tie-in with Transformers, sold under the name Beastformers. The figures were split into Autobot and Decepticon allied factions, and Transformers toys were even offered as mail-away prizes. Now, the Beastformers line didn't include every toy that Hasbro released this year, but it did sell the figures in individual packaging, complete with profile cards and catalogues that told the story of the series. The Decepticons, it was explained, had targeted the Beastformers homeworld, Planet Beast, for conquest, supplying the evil beast Alligatron and his followers with weapons and resources to overthrow the ruling Lion Clan and subjugate the planet in the Decepticon's name. This led in to a special crossover episode of the Japanese original Transformers cartoon, the Headmasters, in which a group of freedom fighters led by the dethroned prince, White Leo, contacted the Autobots for aid. Together, the heroes were able to drive the Decepticons off the planet, though not before the villains had forced the enslaved Beastformers to begin building a gigantic new body for their leader, Scorponok. The Autobots left the Monsterbots stationed on Beast, where the fighting among the Beastformers would continue, chronicled in other media including a Transformers crossover manga special and a series of further catalogue stories, which culminated in White Leo destroying Alligatron with the power of Sunburst, only for a new villain to arise to take his place, the resurrected ancient evil Beastformer, Cobrander. 
For the 1988 product line, a new kind of figure was developed that replaced the rub sign with a translucent marble that revealed one of the three elemental symbols when held up to the light. In Hasbro markets, these figures were known as Shadow Warriors, but they didn't get a widespread release, as Battle Beasts hadn't been a big success and wound up being quickly and quietly cancelled early in the year after only a limited number of the Shadow Warriors had been released. The line lasted longer in Japan. 1988 saw Takara drop the Transformers co-branding and market Beastformers as more of its own thing, with focus on a new dice battle game that could be played with the toys. Many figures from the first year were re-released under this new format, as were most of the remaining toys from the Hasbro line that hadn't previously been available in Japan. The entire range of Shadow Warriors followed later in the year, under the name Laser Beasts, including new Shield Battler and Battle Cruiser figures that came with rideable battle sleds. The line also branched out with other merchandise like candy toys and Gachapon capsule machine exclusives, plus two issues of the magazine Hero Special were dedicated to the series, expanding its world with character profiles, maps and photo comics. The story that accompanied the 1988 toy range revealed the origins of life on Planet Beast. Long ago, a trio of mystic alien beings called the Three Wise Ones came to the planet and created a race of cyborg animals called the Laser Beasts, who lived in a technologically advanced underground kingdom. But over time, the Laser Beasts grew cold and unfeeling, and some of their number, concerned with the direction their society was taking, departed for the surface of the planet, where they founded a society that evolved into the present-day Beastformers. The Wise Ones left behind six mystic gems that maintained the elemental balance of the planet, but when the Beast Formers' war threw the gems out of balance, a fissure was torn into the Laser Beast's subterranean realm, and, led by the cruel Tiger Burn, they emerged to fight the Beast Formers for control of the gems and the planet. But after 1988, like Battle Beasts, Beast Formers was also cancelled and that was pretty much it for the Beasts for nearly two decades. They weren't totally forgotten. With the rise of the internet, many 80s kids who only knew the toys as Battle Beasts were shocked to learn about their connection to Transformers in Japan, and this quirky claim to fame led to the Beasts making some small appearances in English-language Transformers comics. Multiple Battle Beasts cameoed in Dreamwave Productions' 2003 Summer Special when Megatron and the Predacons visited Planet Beast, and in 2007, the G.I. Joe crossover Black Horizon showed some beasts living inside the monster planet Unicron, suggesting that he had consumed them and their world. However, in 2009, after Hasbro had allowed their trademark on the term to lapse, Diamond Select Toys acquired the name Battle Beasts and began planning to produce their own range of original Animal Warrior minifigures under the title. Unrelated to the 80s series beyond the name and basic concept, featuring none of the classic characters or the rub signs, and obviously having no connection to Transformers, Diamond's Battle Beasts launched in 2012 and was supported by a four-issue comic book miniseries from IDW Publishing. The same year, Takara also staged their own reboot of the brand, named Beast Saga. Also unconnected to Transformers, this series reinvented the line as a dice battling game, with the figures shooting dice out of their chests, and it was supported by a manga, an animated TV series, and a video game for the Nintendo 3DS. Sadly, neither revival was very successful, and by 2014, both had been cancelled. But after these twin flops, the Battle Beasts returned to the world of the Transformers in 2016's Titans Return. New toys of the Monsterbots were released in this line, whose heads could disconnect and transform into small Titan Master robots based on Beastformers characters. Twinferno's partner Dabaru was based on White Leo, 
Grotusk's partner Fangle on Platinum Tiger and Repugnus's partner Dastard on Hedgehog. But it didn't stop there. When these toys were released in Japan as part of the Transformers Legends line, the Titan Masters were characterized differently. Here, they weren't just robots who looked like Beast Formers, they were the actual Beast Formers themselves. The tale of this strange new partnership was told in the tie-in Legends manga, which picked up the Beast Formers story where it had left off unfinished in 1988, in the midst of their war with the Laser Beasts, and recounted how White Leo's forces finally claimed victory in the conflict after using the power of the Wise One's gems to merge with the Monster Bots. Soon after, it was revealed that the gems were, in fact, the transformed bodies of the three wise ones themselves, who then granted their power to the monster bots so they could protect Beast from an attack by Galvatron. Supplementing this story, in 2020, the Generation Selects manga divulged even more of the Beast Formers' origins, explaining that the wise ones were members of a race of Beast people from the universe that had existed before the Big Bang, who had survived the death of their reality and recreated their race on Planet Beast. Battle Beasts wasn't what you'd call one of the 80s big toy line success stories, but it remains fondly remembered by its fans. Saved from being totally consigned to the dustbin of history like so many of its contemporaries by its unexpected connection to the world of the Transformers. And those are the basics on the Battle Beasts. Thanks to Greg for sponsoring this episode. Are you old enough to have owned any Battle Beasts? And did you know about their link to the Transformers? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time for more history and lore from the universe of the Robots in Disguise. <laughs>